Be sure and tell them Lord Mars sent ya. <laughs> In the 90s, we were just teeny tights. We went to movies and our bikes. We wanted to be DJs, but we were just teeny gals. So we went off to college and we remained. Hey guys, welcome to the Large Marge Sundance Podcast, your favorite podcast where two sweetie sisters talk about their favorite flicks from childhood. I'm Sweetie with a Y. And I'm Sweetie with an IE. And today, my boyfriend's back and he's gonna eat my face. Hey now, hey Hey now, my boyfriend's back and you're gonna get a beating. And <laughs> you're gonna be eaten oh. just Wait. cause he's a zombie Who's doesn't mean I can't take him to the prom. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you gonna get a beating? That was so violent. I think that might be the real song. What? Yes. Yeah. No way. Okay. It's about my boyfriend we'll coming back to, to town to beat you? What the fuck? Oh, I don't God. think that's what it's about. Um, anyways, so spooky October continues. Um, I randomly brought this movie up a couple months ago, it just like popped into my head. And I was like, oh, remember that movie, My Boyfriend's Back? And Sweetie was like, yeah. And I was like, cool, let's watch it. So tonight we today we watched it. Um, have not seen this movie probably since I was in, let's say, third or fourth grade. Um, Kim Kaplowitz had this on VHS. Shout out. And Kim we, features so much in our podcast. Oh, I, I know. I really hope she listens i know. You know i don't think she does huge but, part of our I mean, of my childhood yeah. i mean she's um, like an honor remember whether she knows it or right. not but she had this vhs and we would watch it and it always just felt very like scandalous to me um mostly, another scandalous yeah, feeling movie. It, it reminds me of yeah the same feelings we had for elvira but there is like this whole like sexual aspect to this movie that's very <laughs> risque let's say but it's mostly in the beginning and then i felt like it kind of petered off but it was still very like gross, which to me f- seemed like adult, like, mm. ooh, gross, nasty. Oh, this is for older people. Um, so, yeah, it felt scandalous. But that's my connection to it. Love it. I love it. Um, yeah. So my boyfriend's back from 1993. So it kind of fits into that genre of coming into the early 90s high school movies. So I you would know, call it. Oh. Well, okay, so there's, I feel like, the 80s high school movies, which is very Can't Buy Me Love, you know, all the John Hughes ones. Then you had this early 90s section, which I feel like was Buffy the Vampire Slayer, this movie. Um, I'm trying to think of another one that was, like, early 90s. Uh, It'll come to us. And then, but we weren't, like, like, but we were, like, in, or at least I was in, like, elementary school, as was Sweetie when this came out. And then when we were in middle school, high school, then we had the Can't Hardly Wait. Then you have mm. the 10 Things I Hate About You. So that like late 90s, early 2000s high school movie. Yeah. So this fits in the, the early 90s high school movie. and um, But like a different kind of way. Because um, it is spooky, number one. And it's, um, you know, more of a social commentary movie than I was expecting. So I um, probably have only seen this movie like once or twice. When I saw as oft, often happens when we watch these movies, scenes just come back to us when we're watching it, right? So it's we're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that scene. Oh, his ear falls off. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that kind of happens. So I'm sure I've seen it like once or twice. But it's a clever little gem, this movie. It's, it's a clever little gem. I really enjoyed it. Um, it is super quirky and... It's a, a dark comedy, which I feel like I don't watch enough because yeah. I do really enjoy those a lot. Um, there's a lot to unpack in those, and they're just like a lot of fun. You know, if, if you can handle that kind of dark humor, not yeah. everybody can, but I, like I love that shit totally. Yeah. It's very absurdist, I would say. Mm, um, it's just like completely silly, and uh, they use this like comic book motif to kind of illustrate certain parts of the story and like the opening credits are that too so i was wondering is was this like based on a comic book maybe? didn't say like some like didn't pulp, say anything about some that. like pulpy comic book yeah. that like was around i, I feel like 
that was like kind of out of place. I didn't really like get why they used that vehicle. Well, that's why so I'm like, much. was this? Yeah, because yeah. it's like I don't know. Like he all wasn't the... like a comic booky guy. Didn't come off that his character like loved comic books or superheroes. Right. Well, that's or anything. why it makes sense that like if this was an homage to yeah. that, if that's the only way they could think to like honor it, yeah. was by that. But um, it's definitely one of those movies you have to leave like rationale at the door more so much than any other movie. Yeah. yeah, because it just stuff just like does not make sense in the acceptance level of people. Let's say just like does not make sense with well, they just a don't. Zombie. Yeah, they don't explain anything. Yeah. So if you're one of those people that's right. like, but why yeah, did right. he become a zombie? I'm yeah. sorry, this is not the movie for you. Like, yeah. it's not what it's about. Yeah. Eventually, I guess you figure that out. But up but front, it's very, very weird yeah. <laughs> and like. It's pretty normal to people in this town that he came back as a zombie, which we'll talk about. But um, it is very silly. That's like the old, the best word I can use to yep. describe it. It's just like silly as fuck. And it felt to me a little bit TV movie to me. Like it had that feeling. And I know it came out in the theaters and it was like a theatrical release. It didn't do that well. But um, it felt a little bit like teen, like TV movie to me just from the, oh. I don't know, just the style. I maybe, think it was just the style. Maybe like of it. the music. Yeah. Because um it maybe. would like it would cue in at like certain like weird yeah. spots, which was kind of more like B horror movie style yeah. than and just all the dream sequences. I yeah. don't know. It just Definitely. felt very like that. Sure. Anyway, so um who's in this film? So the lead actor is this uh, guy named Andrew Lowry, so known for what, sweetie? Buffy the vampire yeah. slayer as the goober friend. Um, who kind Andy. of like, yeah, Andy, who like tries to grab Buffy's butt and she like flips him over the thing. He's a strange actor. I felt like he was drunk the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was not. And he's not really cute. Like he's he's kind of, I guess, cute in the sense of his character was supposed to be an overlooked cute mm. guy. Maybe like just like sensitive and sweet strange. and yeah. and just I mean his whole thing is he just has this insane crush on this girl for his whole life, not really explained why like he just <laughs> he's just like I just loved her and it wasn't because she was hot or popular and you're like it like, wasn't then what was it, it? definitely yeah. was because it's not it didn't seem like they were like hanging out <laughs> no. on the regulars he, so made he doesn't it seem know like her at that, all but they didn't really say that and yeah. I'm like okay but if you like I just feel like every crush I had in elementary school was like okay whoa like I didn't know anything about that person. They it's are supposed to be literally just because I'm like, oh, he's cute, and you're because you don't spend time right. with people when you're young. So I don't think he was really in love with her, but like, yeah. whatever, right. it was cute, let's, I guess. Let's put, let's put that um, aside as what yeah. something we will not explain. Yep. But I mean, he was fine. But I agree. Like, um, and he was in something else too. Oh, school ties. I don't remember him in school ties. I've heard of it, but I've never yeah. seen it. Okay, well, he's in that too, I guess. Um, but in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Does, he's not one of an early vampire victim. No, no that's he, the other guy. Oh, okay. Sc- uh, Scrooge oh, or whatever. Scary looking raper <laughs> face guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Luger, okay, okay. Luver, I don't know. Well, and you, you lubed ro- blueberry schnapps <laughs> all over my mom's closet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's scary, that guy. Um, so, oh, okay, who else? So the, the female lead is Tracy Lind. She, I didn't recognize her from anything. She's in like a horror movie. Was, and then Yeah, she was in the sequel of a horror movie and this movie. Yeah. I was trying to figure out what it was, but I'm pretty sure I must just recognize her from this movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, that must else. be what She's it is. She's very pretty. She has the most uh, perfectly shaped lips I've ever seen. Like a doll. Like, yeah, I mean, just like a, bo- what is that called? Bow? Bow lip Bow or lip? something? I mean, Maybe. Just cla- and yeah. very puffy, like. Yeah, I think she's too young she, to have had a lip job, so I think those are real lips. Well, Crazy. how old was she when she when she seemed a little old? In yeah, my, in my opinion, to be a high schooler, <laughs> she's like a porn star. I'll say it. Yeah. <laughs> and then some like really big names. So you're like, okay, this isn't a horribly casted movie. Edward Herman, my favorite, your favorite, um, talked about many times um, as the dad. He uh, more recently we covered him in Lost Boys as sort of the red herring, you know, mm. leader of the vampires. Uh, spoiler, spoiler alert: um, <laughs> Cloris Leachman, very small role, but very famous old actress. Um, she is uh, in la- was she last was she in the Leave It to Beaver? Wait, who's Cloris Leachman again? Leave it to Beaver or Lassie's mom? Uh, not Lassie's mom, but the I don't know, but she was in Double Double, Toil and Trouble, the Mary Kate and Ashley Halloween movie classic. Uh, she's a famous older actress. Um, you know, just soups fames. Yeah, soups I mean, she's a very small bit in this. Um, I think she was drunk <laughs> <laughs> also. Um, but yeah, weird. Um, Matthew Fox, so from Party of Five fame. And Lost. And Lost, yep. As sort of the, as is, you know, pretty 
pretty similar in all these kind of high school movies. The jerky guy who the main girl is dating. Um, his name is Buck, I believe. Buck Van Patten. Yeah, do not name your kid Buck. If that's even their real name, nickname, they're going to be an asshole, no doubt. Um, this was his first movie. Wow. 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 Pretty cool. Then he went on to fucking TV fame. So yeah. good for him. And then uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, also, what are you doing in this movie? Who goes as <laughs> Philip Hoffman in this movie. That's what he went by. What happened to the Seymour? I don't know. Yeah, he must. He changed it up later. He's like, I'm, I need to be taken as a serious actor. Philip yeah. Hoffman sounds like an accountant, yeah. so I'm going to add Seymour, and mm-hmm. then I'm a Oscar winner. Um, but yeah, this is like Philip Hoffman, aka Philip Seymour Hoffman's era of kind of playing these like terrible people, yeah. um, and like terrible runs like the gamut of either like a psycho. In this movie, yeah. I would say I classify him as like a psycho Neanderthal. And then we have like the talented Mr. Ripley where he was like an asshole, like gross, like stuck up person or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then he just kind of gets dumb and like sexual, like in Twister or something. Yeah. And he's like, boo. This is like right. a three brain cell character. <laughs> yeah. you know, I feel it's like a he, variation on he that. He plays the yeah. levels a lot. But yeah, and I'm like, is he speaking English? Yeah. Like, what's <laughs> happening? His name is Chuck. No offense, your name is Chuck. But again, I feel like kind of adult Chuck name. Chuck and Buck. Um, and then Matthew McConaughey <laughs> as guy number one. Um, he has one line. I'm sure he was a guy number two? He seems like guy number two. I think he was guy number one because he had the first line in that they were kind of like bullies at the movie theater. Um, really no, like, nothing it's consequential to the plot but uh also his first movie like, so what? random so random and i'm like okay this is 1993 i feel like he was a star not quite after yeah. 1993 so i don't know what leap he made or what casting director saw Who's him did he like, suck <laughs> yeah <laughs> Jesus. I mean, you know, a good looking fella, but yeah, what the hell. He might have done Texas Chainsaw Massacre yes. right after this. The second, yeah. like the second one, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, so like randomly, a lot of famous actors in this, but that weird thing where like the the lead actors are nobody now, and then like all these bit parts are actually like really famous people. Whoa, yeah. guy number one. <laughs> yeah, just that like <laughs> twist. Very strange. Um, anyway, so yeah, um, that is... All I have to say. <laughs> wow. Cool. Cool. Just, you know, all right. Just well, yeah, that's all I have to say. So maybe we just, let's yeah. just start, jump into it. Yeah. It's time for the sweetie synopsis. Yeah, sweeties. Bye, son. Be nice to God. Johnny Dingle. Not Johnny Dingleberry. <laughs> uh, Johnny Dingle is a 17-year-old boy living in, like, some podunk county where they have a lot of guns. I don't know, Texas, but nobody has an accent, so I'm Apparently unsure. Apparently this was filmed in Round Rock, Texas, which, um, guys, my uh, off, one of my work offices, so we were, I work for a publishing company. We have a couple around the country. One of ours is in Round Rock, Texas. What? That's why I know the name of that. that it's wow. outside of Austin. Wow, 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 wow. That's wow, where wow. Round Rock is. Okay. Hi to all my Round Rock peeps. Yeah. Mo, Aaron, some other people. <laughs> <laughs> Gary? Gary does not work in Damn Round it. Rock. I know. Um, so Johnny Dingle is like hopelessly in love with this girl named Missy who he's been in love with since like the first grade. There's some traumatic incident at a birthday party where he tried to give her a gift and then he chickened out and then the mom was like, okay, time for cake and presents. <laughs> I'm like, I mean, I mean, we, sorry, time for cake. It's like, um, we haven't opened the presents. Though. Like if you see a present and it's not like the present was, it was there. He just didn't give it to her. Like Here's he what had I it in his about. hand. At children's birthday parties, it's not like a personal giving of presents. Right. You put at them like, on a at table. At the time, yeah. They open. <laughs> You're not like, I this is from me. That what would, happened with that? That would be so awkward. Yeah, would like, that be really um, awkward? But anyways, he chickens out, so he doesn't give her the present. So he's like, carries this regret with him his whole life, pretty much. And like, of course, Missy turns out to be this like super popular girl who dates like the biggest um, asshole jock in school, Buck Van Patten. Um, so he kind of feels like he missed the the boat there, I'm sure. Um, that all changes, though, when Missy and Buck break up, apparently. So he thinks it's his time. So uh, he goes to, like, try to confess his love, and it doesn't work. He chickens out again, and then it turns out her and Buck are really back together. It seems like the reason they broke up was, like, pretty stupid. Yeah. He, like, didn't show up to something, and so now they're broken. I don't know, whatever. But Johnny's like, it's not over yet. I have a plan. So his plan 
and they, I guess it lines up with the fact that in English class that day they were learning about heroes. Mm, okay. So it kind of like, I guess, makes him start thinking. He comes up with this plan with his friend Eddie to have Eddie um, pretend to rob the convenience store that Missy works at while Johnny is there trying to buy things. And Johnny's going to save the day and then it'll be like one of those high risk situations that like makes people fall in love or whatever that we always talk about with Sea Speed for more detail. He'll be a hero. (laughs) Hold it up for a hero. I mean, it's a little. As Eddie said, it's pretty desperate. Like, it's a crazy. I've never quite seen or heard a plan like this before. Well, from Eddie's perspective, like, he's breaking the law. (laughs) Like, he's. Fake holding up a convenience store, but no one's going to know that. You're going to tell the cops like, oh, this was just some like convoluted plan for my friend to get a date to prom. I don't know. I mean, Eddie is the one rational person in this movie, which is always what a movie like this needs. Mm -hmm. And you should be listening to Eddie because, you know, it goes wrong. It goes horribly wrong. Always listen. And it does go horribly wrong because a real bank, I keep saying bank robber, a real robber shows up and takes the mask off Eddie and goes in to, to hold up the joint. Um, of course, Johnny thinks it's Eddie, so he's like trying to be all brave, jumps in the front of the bullet and prevents it from hitting Missy, and then he dies, basically. So it's all very sad, and everybody's all upset at the, the graveyard. He gets buried. Um, wouldn't you know it? He comes back to life. He comes back to life the next, out of that the next day or whatever. Yeah. Um, and the grave digger's like, oh, hey. He's like, oh, wow, yeah, you're dead. Like, I haven't seen somebody... Rise from the the dead in 15 years, last Thanksgiving or something. Um, so we know this has happened before, which I guess kind of like sort of makes up for the fact that nobody's like that shocked. Yeah. But uh, he tells Johnny he can't leave the graveyard. And Johnny's like, or what? And he's like, uh, you'll find out. Like, tell him. I just feel like, <laughs> like he could have gotten it out, whatever. But Johnny is on a mission to like ask Missy out but to prom and no still go with her. Wouldn't be on that mission. What are you gonna be wandering around a graveyard alive? Well, that's what I was wondering. What, like, what's I the don't point know a lot of zombies Me that neither. do that. Like ghosts. And I sure. feel like that's not in. You know, we're gonna talk a lot in this podcast about like you know when we talked about vampires, the 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 technical vampire rules that sort of go from movie to movie. There's zombie rules too, zombie and I feel rules. like I've never heard a zombie rule being like you need to stay in the cemetery or else you start rotting. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. Yeah, what kind of life is that? And then it's like, can anybody see you? Is it like, oh, we're going to go see the zombies at the cemetery? Yeah. Like, it's, it just seems like a weird thing. So fun. Anyways, but Johnny doesn't listen. He leaves the cemetery, goes back home. He's like, hey, mom and dad. And his parents have just like buried their son. And in he comes, a little pale, weird lips, um, gray. Looks gray. gray. (laughs) He looks pal. Is pallid? Is that a word? Mm hmm. Um, yeah, he looks bad. He looks ill. So they're a little freaked out at first, but it goes away pretty quickly. And then it kind of just is like accepted after that. So Johnny shows up to school the next day and everybody's like, oh my God. And then they're like, oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, you're back. Um, but there's some discrimination because he is in fact dead. Dead. So people, they're not so cool with that. Yeah. People are weirded out. I mean, as you would be. Right. Um, I mean, my any thing sort of is like, why doesn't he smell? Like, they don't make they make all the other things yeah. happen, but he seems to not be smelling I know. bad. Again, I think that's something that this movie had to forego, or else it wouldn't have been accepted because um, he ends up being physical with someone eventually, <laughs> and that would have really put the kibosh on that. If you were a smelly rotting corpse, wow, your breath like, is I'm sorry, really you bad. can't be like making out with like no. with maggots in your mouth. No, no nasty. No, no, yeah. No, no. But so he goes to like try to ask Missy out and Buck comes and is like, you can't be talking to dead people. Blah, 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 blah. And she's like, don't tell me what to do. And then she's like, I'm going out with Johnny. And it's very strange because prior to this, she was really not excited at all. Yeah. But then like whatever Buck said to her, she's like, oh, OK, forget it. Yeah. Missy's all over the place. Yeah. But it seems like. I just like really don't know who she is. Buck is really like sets her off. In like yeah. bad bad ways. I'm like, why are you dating this? Right. Why are you dating this motherfucker? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So she, for some reason, now is very turned on by Johnny, and it's inexplicable. We don't know, <laughs> like, <laughs> what switch turned. I mean, his color is like. Um, <laughs> you ever had like uh, chicken liver mousse? Sure. That's kind of like gray. <laughs> it's kind of like yeah. that color. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's and if you know anything about the human body. Uh, we get our color from blood like coursing through every vein and every artery in our body, right? That gives the body color. As soon as you die, if you've ever seen a dead body, uh, 
you lose that color like immediately. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, makes sense. Total logical sense. I've seen so it yeah, he looks pretty awful. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. So uh, let's see. What are we? Where were we? So they go on a date. He goes on a date with Missy. Things start getting hot and heavy in the car. She like goes to nibble on his ear and his ear comes off. Why so, is she more attracted to him dead than alive? I don't know. <laughs> it's just like that. It's like it's like Teen Wolf. Yeah. It's like what is this? Like this new thing. New it's thing. like the yeah. outsider. Yeah. This yes. like different. And some um, girls love that outsider. Right. This like person. defiance mm-hmm. of whatever your parents or your boyfriend right. don't want right, you right, to right, do. Right. I'm gonna fucking do it. Like that's what it is. So, um, he, he Johnny freaks out because his ear fell off. Obviously, he goes to the doctor, who super glues it back on. Um, he's like, I'm going to take some skin samples, see if I can figure out what's going on. I'm all like, save your life. So, um, at this point, uh, the doctor says someone you should talk to is such, I forget her name, but like some old lady, some old bitty in town, like go talk to her. So she is the wife of the last guy who rose from the dead 15 years ago. So we go over to her house and she's like, oh, you poor boy, like you're dead too. No sign of her husband. So I'm assuming like he didn't make it from the zombie, whatever, like, I don't know. But essentially what she tells him is that the only way you have to survive is if you consume human flesh. Mm -hmm. So he's like, what? I don't want to do that. I'm like, dude, you're a zombie. Like, put it together. Like, that's yeah, what they do. That's very technical <laughs> zombie lore. Yeah. Like, it makes sense. That's pretty normal, actually. Um, so he is repulsed and, like, runs away or whatever. But his urges keep getting stronger and stronger. So he, like, tries to take a bite of his, like, buddy's arm. He, like, is just, like, trying to eat this fat girl at the library. And it's like, okay, well, it's happening. So eventually uh, you know that mob mentality kind of starts to kick in because buck and the uh his weird goon friend played by philip hoffman <laughs> like it, it just doesn't sound right you call him seymour oh yeah i'll call him philip seymour hoffman s e um p s h it's not a good it's not a good acronym name but he chuck and buck uh and their parents who all seem to be rednecks um go after johnny with like guns and like try to hunt him down because they he's trying to like hurt people and they think he'll eat people so they're like what and on top of it all there's he's stealing buck's girlfriend so the goon chuck goes after johnny with an axe he's about to swing the axe into johnny but unfortunately it's one of those axes with the like pointy part on the end like not the blade but the other side that you use mm-hmm to do something to like grab stuff out it it up. Yeah. yeah you like put it in you're like ah, and like yank like shit out pickaxe. yeah yeah exactly so that he goes to, you know big swing behind his head and it hits him in the head and goes in Ooh. for the longest time i thought that's like that's just how axes worked and i was like how does anybody <laughs> not kill themselves every time because i would see people getting ready and every time i see someone start to like do an axe thing whether yeah. it be like axe throwing or like um, chopping wood I'm like oh, and that reminds me of this movie it's like the the thing that's always been burned in my brain brutal um, but yeah so Chuck dies and then Johnny's like oh okay well he's dead so I'm just gonna eat him so he starts like eating his stomach and of course everybody walks in on that so he tries to explain it but um, the word gets out <laughs> that he did that so now people are really after him um, at this point, I think he knows, like, okay, I'm probably going to die because my body just keeps decaying, but I just want to make it at least until prom right. That's so that I goal. can, yeah, like, so that I can he think he was, he, dance with he, her. I think he kind of thinks he was brought back just so he could make this, like, final. Because yeah. he his dying thing right before he dies is he asked her the prom, and she says yes. Oh, yeah. Now, she says it, yes, based, I think because it was He's sort dying. of a... Yeah. Uh, under duress sort of a very sad moment and she was just trying to do a dying man's wish you know come true not thinking that he would come back right mm-hmm. so um he's just sort of saying okay if basically i i'm okay dying as long as we get to go to prom together mm-hmm. i think that's his like final life goal which is what he always wanted anyway so it fits yeah um and but then stuff is getting really hard with like the townspeople. Yeah, they're not they're not into it. Her dad's the sheriff. He's yeah. not into it. It's like this whole thing. He's like, I want you to leave quietly. Like, go away from here. And it is getting a little sketchy with you know once you see if he was a very innocent zombie not doing anything, but once he was caught in the compromising position of eating somebody, 
you know, it was really kind of the point yeah, of no I mean, return. Like, I'd be fine with him eating people because they were dead. Yeah. Like if they already died or like they worked out some deal where like he ate somebody like immediately after they died. If they I like, I don't eat my body. Lore, to z- you had to eat living people. Like you can't eat corpses. I mean, maybe. I mean, I'm sure like corpses is like not the best. I thought they wanted like, Let's is it just call flesh it, or is it the life force? It seems like the flesh, but like mm. it seems like maybe it's like the difference between synthetic and real blood or something where it's yeah. like not as good so really you want like I living mean, if flesh. it's just blood just give them back It'd be the funny blood. if like like an organ donor stamp we had like a i donate my body to zombies like <laughs> stamp that you could just like supply food for a zombie alive. if you should die um but anyways meanwhile the doctor has f- actually discovered a cure for this disease or whatever and i'm not sure it's convinced it's like a cure so much it seems like okay so he it's like injects this chicken with this whatever he got from the zombie skin tissue puts the chicken in like a thing Mm -hmm. and then turns the button on and then the chicken gets zapped to a chick again so you're like what and so it seems like it's rolling back life but not really because it's not like he was killing the chicken and then resurrected it like i just didn't understand what that experiment was showing and what were they going to give right. Johnny what some sort of What would it have done to serum? Johnny? Would he become a baby? No, I think it would just stop his cells from decaying, maybe? Could they get him cells from being alive again? Like, it, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't I don't get know. it. But essentially, his, like, weird girlfriend slash wife nurse is like, let's actually use this to get more of his flesh to make more serum and market it as, like, um, cosmetic surgery without surgery. So that's kind of now he's like his nobility is kind of like (laughs) cursed by this woman, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, So he pretends that he has the cure and he's like, Johnny, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to save your life. So he uh, Eddie goes and gets missing. He's like, Johnny's going to be cured. So they go to the doctors. Turns out it's not the case. He's trying to steal Johnny's flesh. He keeps getting interrupted by the townspeople trying to like knock down the door. They, of course, bring one of those, like, log door stomper over thingers, like, thingies Kill the and, like, beast. <laughs> Beauty and the Beast that the mob has. <laughs> and they get through. Johnny escapes. He runs back to the graveyard and um, is about to, like, go back in, like, to the grave or whatever. And then the people get catch up to him. Um, turns out everyone's, okay, I guess you're right. It's okay that you're dead. Like, you're going to be dying soon anyways. I guess you can have one dance with a girl. Right. Who cares? Yeah, good. So they go to the dance. The, the theme is I'm in heaven, which is like Aww. wink, wink. And they dance, uh, like half a dance. And then Johnny kind of like starts like, I'm, di- I'm dying again. And he fades out and uh, Missy's like, I love you, blah, blah, blah. Very nice. So then fades into limbo. Yeah. Purgatory, well, essentially. Yeah, purgatory. So the gates of Saint Peter, the classic, the classic, like you're in a courtroom waiting for jury to eat and you're being called up one at a time to like be judged on whether you're going to heaven or hell. So the guy who's doing this is like, OK, there was a situation. You weren't actually supposed to die. The robber was supposed to slip on coffee. It didn't happen. So when that happens, we give people a second chance, which means they come back as zombies. And then if we f- think what they did in that time, they returned. If they like made up for what they missed or like whatever we think they're worthy, we'll write it or whatever. So he's like, what? And then it's kind of like, eh, yeah, OK, OK. Well, it's time for you to go back to where you belong. So they don't really say like what's going to happen. But then he wakes up and it's like the convenience store again, except he hasn't been shot yet. So before right before he died, Missy put like the silver locket over him, which is the present he was going to give Missy when he was in first grade. But check it out. Right. And it's like when we were watching this, we're like, wow, that's a heavy present to give to a second grader or however old they were, because it's just like giant. Okay, it's not your typical locket, which have you ever seen little delicate sweet ones? They're like, oh, those are nice. This is this giant one. The heart is like literally the size of a half dollar, and it's chunky. It's not. It wouldn't lie flat. It's like a chunky heart. Inside are a picture of him and Missy as little kids. He was gonna give this to her as like a second grader, be like, "I love you so much." You're in my kindergarten class or whatever. Like, it seemed like a heavy present for you know anyone. that that age or anyone <laughs> who you haven't dated at all. Um, yeah. But so it's really good that he was able to give that to her much later in life because it made like a little bit more sense and she wasn't as creeped out because it's pretty much psychotic. Yes, I think it is. Yes. But she puts it over his neck and then he dies, whatever. So now that he's gone in this like rechant, this redo, 
um, he gets shot and then he confesses to Missy this time as he's dying. Like, I've loved you since first grade. All I've ever wanted to do is like go be with you, go to prom with you, um, blah, blah, blah. And then Missy's like, oh, you're not dead. And like, I guess he had the locket on and whatever angel trick that was and they <laughs> sent sent the locket it's not like time travel right. like it's confusing that that's like why I was confused. angel like these angels or whatever can just like make that whatever it's fine there's no rules yeah um so that's what saved him the locket so now he gets to live his life and it's great and he could be with missy and she realizes that like wow it is great when the person you're in love with actually wants to be with you and would like th- like throw away their life for you like wow this is great you know, such the the feeling that many women have when they finally meet someone who's not a piece of trash. Right. Um, I mean, he really did love her, again, for, like, no reason whatsoever. I mean, we don't understand, <laughs> like, why. She, she clearly love. loved her from afar. And she did seem like a good person, and the whole movie does sort of validate that because she is, like, not really sketched out about him being a zombie will do anything for him sexually aroused by him being a zombie right. exactly like, are you Which just using him for like a zombie she loves him too private. i don't know anyway it's just, just like not a, a lot of substance coming from missy like i yeah. don't know who no, she that's is what, that's i, don't know who I she never is. understand with these like i wish they would have make like one or two scenes that would make you believe that like wow they have this like connection or like she's like this it's amazing person my boyfriend's back so yeah. like for me I always thought like, oh, this is a movie about her and her boyfriend coming back to life. No, it's it about... It should have been called My Stalker's Back. It didn't... Okay, we'll get into this. But, okay, so My Boyfriend's Back. Sorry, that's the end of the movie, basically, yeah. is okay. like happy ending. But happy ending. Wait, hold on. Before we go into that, did they make it, sweetie? <laughs> I mean, no. Like, <laughs> they hadn't been together all their life. Right. They don't know what kind of couple they are. Like, they need to do out a couple of test runs. They're going to go to college and be like, wow, that was stupid. Like, Hang out with each other for um, more than like a second? Reality is not. Yeah, this isn't reality. Like, no, it's dumb. It's dumb. Stupid. Stupid. Um, but yeah, so it's called My Boyfriend's Back, which is the like a Ronette song from like the 50s or whatever. It's like, my boyfriend's back and we're going to get married. I did, hey I did now, look at the lyrics. Hey it's now. not. You're going to get a beating. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thank fucking God. My boyfriend's back and you're going to be in trouble. Hey la, de la, my boyfriend's back. You see him coming better cut out on the double. You've been spreading lies that I was untrue. So look out now because he's coming after you. <laughs> scary so yeah okay so it's a little different so it's really not about zombies at all and they don't use the song in the on the soundtrack or in the movie so you're like and he was not missy's boyfriend so it doesn't make sense so i ask you why did they name it this title like not necessary the original title was um johnny the zombie that's fine. Yeah, I know. I don't That's know why the they, point. Didn't, they didn't. Maybe do they that. couldn't market market it like that. They wanted it to be more like a teen, like teen scream yeah. kind of thing, yeah. and so they needed like boyfriend in there. Or I think like, it, it makes it seem more like rom com. I think. Yeah, like it, a romance yeah. teeny kind of thing. But I agree. Like, even if they couldn't get that Ronette song, they could have done. I mean, you could you still have to get the rights to it, but it would have been cool to do like a revamp of that song and make like not yeah, like necessarily a doo wop one. You yeah. could have do, done something like a little different. I mean, that all, all you're expecting when the credits roll <laughs> right. is like my <laughs> boyfriend's back and you're gonna be in trouble. Right, such a lost opportunity. Let I mean, down the rights for that were like crazy amount I of guess, money. But, but what? yeah, Johnny's a zo- the zombie. I just think it would have been, and people would have thought mean, that was maybe too horror yeah, movie. Probably, yeah. definitely that. It had. I mean, to, it doesn't have to have mix. zombie, and it can just be like, uh, Missy, <laughs> I love you, or like, I don't know, hopeless. I don't know, like heartbroken. I don't know, <laughs> something. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like they could have spent more time on it. Yeah. But anyway, so that's my like biggest pet peeve with this. Overall, I think this movie, if I were to describe this movie to somebody, I would be like, it's like if, if it's like Edward Scissorhands, if it, Edward Scissorhands didn't make sense. Yeah. Which is like funny because a lot of Edward Scissorhands doesn't appear to make sense. But right. actually it does because you're like, why does this guy have scissors for hands? And then you would say, oh, <laughs> well, actually, this old scientist up in an old castle built him and then died. So he didn't have anyone who was there. Right. It makes, it makes perfect. It sense. makes sense. This movie does not make sense. And they don't explain anything. And that's part of the charm, um, it seems. But even with Edward Scissorhands, like other than the mom, who seems to be the one person who's the most God. truest of heart in that film. Oh, I just love her. Oh, so good. Um, right. What's the actress's name? Diane, Diane at least yeah the only person everyone else takes some time to be like okay why is this guy it's just for hands like what's mm-hmm. going on 
This one, you have the parents who, you know, they, it's their son. So they're going to love him no matter what, whether he's dead or alive. So they're very accepting. And then Missy is, which I, for me doesn't make sense because again, she doesn't really know him. And when at the funeral, she even says like, wow, I really wish we had gotten to know each other better. So like she didn't really know him at all. And I would get the friend. She, he was very close to that buddy of his. Yeah. So he was pretty much very willing to accept it too. So, but this movie is very much like the, along the lines of this, um, you know, we brought up already Beauty and the Beast, you know, kill the beast. It's, da, da, yeah, da, it's, da, that, da. it's that archetype. Edward Scissorhands. Yeah. This, Out, um, this outcast yeah. or uh, read in one of the reviews, like a commentary. Basically, this movie is a commentary on social discrimination. Hmm. So that if someone is different from you, like how does like a big town react or how does a mob, you know, basically you have the mob scene come in. I mean, you could, if you really wanted to, in some ways, the way some of these scenes play out because it's a dating sort of scenario and you have have a lot with uh scenes with her dad who is this town cop like look into that what you will being very against her dating this dead guy and it felt to me very almost racial like in a lot of ways the 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 language that was used felt very like well you can't date a dead guy it felt you could switch black guy in there and it would be like honestly yeah. like the same movie so it felt very much like they were doing something like that and making those kind of parallels, which is really smart in a lot of ways when you want to talk about something like that, but don't want to make it like this big, you know, heavy handed hmm. thing. We Now, very much we should be making it a heavy handed thing. It's not even heavy handed. It's way to the world. We need to like, you know, flush that out and talk about it. But in the 90s, I feel like they were like, okay, we might not be able to make this sort of big announcement about, wow, like you should accept people for who they are and, and not be challenging it. People who are different than you. Mm -hmm. Um, that's how they, they did it. Which I don't know if they were successful in this because it was just so silly Silly. that like you couldn't really like write it off as like an actual lesson or morality like thing. I don't know. And also Um, because the change in people was kind of like flippant. Right. When they're around the gravesite, they're like, Oh, Okay. Yeah, uh, we don't want to do zombie burnings anymore. Go to prom, okay? <laughs> like, great. Well, I wish you thought that before you fashioned the giant log breaking door down thing. But like, is, I don't understand why the zombie burning was. You know, why was that? You can't. Okay, you can't. They try to shoot him a bunch of times. You can't obviously kill a dead person. But with zombie lore, I asked Sweetie this: um, like, how do you kill a zombie? By killing their brain. Because the brain is still alive. Is that the idea? I mean, it's what's like triggering their synapses to function, I guess. Um, yeah, so traditionally shooting a zombie in the head. Um, I guess decapitation could also classify. Yeah, that's what I like, um, thought. But, maybe but I was thinking as far of that as movie. I know, you can't burn a zombie. It would just catch on fire and like because it was dead flesh. I don't know if it would ever like burn or like there's something mm-hmm. weird. Like if they just like an on fire zombie. I don't know. <laughs> Um, but they ha- there are zombies that are just like skeletons, like yeah. still crawling. So I'm assuming that like it still wouldn't be dead. But like a skeleton doesn't have a brain. So I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, zombies are weird. I am not that into zombies. Probably from this movie. Um, I was watching this and I was like, maybe this movie's the reason I don't like zombie movies. Well, they're just okay. I don't understand. Well, this is what I hate is the like eating people thing I think is gross. And like the like decaying nature of the body is just so gross that it like really makes me like gross well, it's grossed out yeah, and that was the most gross part of this movie so he like loses an ear he is uh, it's a dream sequence but he loses a nose and then like a limb and then a penis they don't show it but it like falls down his pant leg it makes like a bell noise <laughs> do you think it was the penis and the balls i think it was the you think it was right the whole clanging thing? was the like balls, the balls or something yeah but Ooh. the shaft also fell <laughs> we think um, so yeah, so that part gets kind of gross. Um, but I did want to go into um, zombie lore zombie as I did some um, the research on zombies in general. Like, why did zombies come about? Um, so they kind of traced it to voodoo culture. So uh, throwback to Weekend at Bernie's too, right? Um, are another kind of zombie esque movie. Um, the first one being Weekend at Bernie's. You know, it's he's not really a zombie. Well, it's like, yeah. But they're making like, yeah, him into a zombie. Haitian, yeah, Haitian voodoo yeah. or like hoodoo lore of like this mythos. Maybe this is, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe you looked this up, but I did. The mythos, uh, they used to like bury people standing up because I guess they had cases of people who were like accidentally buried alive, but were still, al- 
bury who they thought were dead but were still alive. So they would stand them up so that in case that they did make a mistake, they could come back to life and like break out of the like whatever. Um, so they think like the general culture thinks that's where like the myth of zombies zombies comes from. Well, there's this thing called Bokers, B-O-K-E-R-S, which is like um, this in, in voodoo culture where you can give people basically what are called zombie powders. And it's this chemical called tetradoxin which is that's found, what serpent in the rainbow is about that's yeah, exactly what they were talking found about. like in some real. animals actually i forgot what animals they said. um uh, but spine you, uh, blowfish you, yeah blowfish so if you give them to people in sub-lethal doses so if you gave them too much it would kill them but at a certain doses they have zombie-like symptoms and then kind of the last ones are paralysis and a coma so they look like they're dead so people would then get buried, but then be buried alive and then rise from the dead. So they really weren't dead. They were just in this state of, right. like you described it today when you were describing that movie to me, like uh, Romeo and Juliet, when Juliet takes that poison to fake her death and, and they bury her. Luckily, she wasn't buried underground. It was like an, you know, a tomb. Um, she was able to come out of that. But So they have a couple on record of people like she actually. She killed herself shortly right. after. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but that they have a couple of counts. I mean, it was only like a handful of that actually happening to people. So I don't know why you would give those powders or like what's the deal with that. And then there's some stuff about like um, they said like in ancient Greece that there are some wall paintings and stuff where they had um, skeletons were like weighed down with stones. So they think in other cultures there was that you know, thought that these dead people could like rise up and, and be alive again. So I think it has kind of continued mm -hmm. like throughout time. But I wanted to ask you because really for, you know, we're very much a walking dead culture now. I mean, that show's over now, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. it's over. But for the US and just the horror movie in general, it really started with Night of the Living Dead, right? Um, that was the um, one that was really like an like older movie set called White Zombie that was like more uh, like uh, voodoo kind of culture. Like, but it, in, in pop culture, that movie was yes. the one that like probably put zombies on the map, sure. if you will. So, Rich, uh, Richard Romero, George Romero, George Romero, <laughs> and then he did a couple more. Yeah, right, that so was like his really Dead, his thing, which is very revolutionary because. It was this, uh, the main character is this black guy. And um, I free, when that movie came out, it was like the 60s mm -hmm. maybe. And it was like super, like people were like, whoa. Like, a, I mean, a black guy is like rarely the star of a movie. And in this movie, he's like kicking ass of all these like dead white people. And he has this, it's, it was just, it was cool. Um, so that's the first one. And then he came back with Dawn of the Dead, which is like highly lauded as like the best zombie movie probably oh. um, in modern times. It is a commentary on consumerism. Um, this like group of people are at the mall and all these zombies are just continuously flocking there in their death because George Romero saw it as like we're tied to all these things okay. and these things that we want to buy and these clothes that we need to have that even in our dead we travel back to that like zombies like we can't get away from it so that's that whole thing it's pretty it's pretty great um, it has, it's well, when did very that one famous. come out? Uh, 70s probably oh, okay. and then um, Day of the Living Dead which is actually my favorite of the his zombie um, trilogy or whatever um, and that one is, was like uh, late seventies or early eighties, um, and it was just like gave a more humanistic side to the zombies, which I think until that time hadn't really ever happened. Zombies were always just like a monster. So at some point in the nineties, two thousand, zombies began to have a, like a more humanistic approach to them, where like they weren't monsters so much as just dead people who were still talking and doing silly things. Yeah. And at that point, I feel like they really started to turn take more of like the comedy route. Yeah. So at some, maybe the late 90s, early 2000s, zombies became mostly like a comedy genre a lot in a lot of horror movies. You yeah. have like Shaun of the Dead, which is like the most famous yeah. comedy horror probably. Which is really funny. Um, but people just, yeah, people zombies stopped being scary yeah. for after a little while definitely and not maybe until the walking dead that they start coming back as scary yeah. and then you get the fast zombies so then you get the zombies that can run like in 28 days later and um like those movies where you're like why is the zombie running now <laughs> or that's not fair um so they it's just fascinating it's just like most things in horror what we choose to focus on is like a commentary on like whatever is going on in our lives Definitely. right now so like with zombies yeah it's like all these kinds of things of like what are we still coming back to to like do after we're dead what are we afraid of we're afraid of ourselves and like that whole kind of thing um so that's my horror yeah professor lecture on zombies that's great 
I've actually yeah. seen Night of the Living Dead. I remember I watched it in high school. My friend Lisa on Halloween. We, you know, we were in high school, so we were too old for trick or treating, and no one was having parties. So she's like, "Let's watch Night of the Living Dead, like in a dark room, really scary." And it was like pretty freaky. I remember it was. It was very. It's very, very simplistic. Much, very simple. Um, um, yeah. Like the zombies just have like dark circles under yeah. their eyes is like but the main so makeup, scary. but it's so effective. And the little girls on yeah, it's like it's pretty good. Yeah, no, I, re- yeah. I really liked it. I mean, it did feel very, kind of antique, but I would in a good way. I would recommend Dawn of the Dead yeah, for I you and Jimmy. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's supposed. I mean, a lot of people, it's like people's number one wow, best horror movie. Okay. I'm not again super into zombies, so it never really landed on cool, my cool, list. Cool. But um, it's a great movie. Yeah. So speaking of horror movies, apparently the exterior shots of Missy's house are Nancy's house from Nightmare on Elm Street. I was going to say that noticed. red door. I noticed because. Yeah. That red door was very like, oh, that reminds me of Nightmare on Elm Street. And so, wow, good one. Yeah, that's really cool. A um, couple other little tidbits here. Um, Renee Zellweger was actually in this movie as well and had a couple lines, but her scene got cut out. Fuck. So that could have been another person that we were so like, funny. first movie. That wow. would be of crazy. Which is weird because, wait, I think she was in Texas Chainsaw Massacre too what? also oh my with God. Matthew McConaughey. That's could be nuts. wrong, but that might be right. That's crazy. Um, okay, and then I want to go into two segments. So first is 90s stuff, <laughs> as we always do with these. Um, I love talking about 90s stuff. I know. You know? Can't so good. Be, so be. cozy. All right. So first up, let's go with the Revlon curlers. Oh, my God. Revlon. That's what the brand? Yeah. Wow. So um, they're at the beauty salon. There's a beauty salon scene. And because it's like pre-proms, I think people are getting ready for prom or whatever. And one girl is under the little, you know, that thing you get, whatever that thing's the called. Dry, I know. I've always wanted to go something. under that. I've gone under it a couple of times. I've had like a gloss put on yeah, my hair. It's just like, like a lot of heat, di- yeah, okay. heat or yeah. steam that gets in there. So she had on these Revlon curlers with ladies. Am I right? If you grew up in the 90s, there was this Revlon curlers. They were turquoise, the larger ones, and the bigger ones were, are, are, and the smaller ones were red for the smaller curls. And it was like this weird little shape. How would you describe that, sweetie? Like rubber. Like a mushroom. They were these rubber silicone, like yeah, mushroom curlers that you would wind up and then like, pu- like kind of push pop in. pop in and it would be these little things all over your head right and like i said the the green ones were these big ones so for bigger curls and the small ones they curled your hair amazing you would have they were ringlets great. and it was heated so it would be this this heated curler situation oh my god brought I mean, me back when we were growing up that was the only way to curl your hair like i don't remember there being a curling iron until we significantly had an later curling iron i don't know yeah, if but you remember okay, mom had yeah. an it was like white 70s white yeah. one that looked like it would burst into flames and i feel like it would burn second. and i feel like i didn't want to use that because yeah. of little women in like the scene yes. where joe's hair falls I mean, off i was like i'm not using ancient. that that thing's a death trap along the lines of remember our old electric blanket yes. i don't know if you remember that old yes. thing again we had all these like 70 appliances <laughs> that like my parents just had i mean this was now 10 or years later or whatever so of course they still had them oh my god that thing was a fire trap like never use it what was going on <laughs> scary i just got maybe not maybe it was well i mean i have this built. Nothing uh, happened. And this wasn't even in a blanket this was like a heating pad yeah it was like it was a, a heating pad and it had a weird embroidery side and then the other like side was plain flowers yeah yellow yeah, flowers brown no brown, brown and like, yellow flowers. what was with like 70s and 80s brown what shit was the thing Everything there's like was hippie brown. yeah it was like that whatever yeah. okay um and that same scene they talk about shoes dyed to match their prom dresses which was a very big thing in the day remember now that seems ludicrous <laughs> Who, you don't need shoes that match your fucking dress exactly like yeah. calm down we, yeah the 90s was such the time for matchy, matching matchy. and oh man it is so true and i remember like sweetie had a blue uh dress for her semi-formal in eighth grade and she you got those blue shoes to go with it yes and it was like amazing. Oh, we yeah, were like, I can't like, believe yes. we found these shoes that are the same color. And I remember our older sister Liz went to prom. There was there was discussion where they were gonna dye her shoes. Like maybe if I get these like strappy, nasty, closed toe sandals, I can dye them. But I guess she didn't need to or something oh, like that. Such a thing. Um, but yeah, that Matching was a thing. Shoes. So weird. But like, who is the time to dye something? Know. If if now I was faced with the possibility so of having to dye crazy. something, I'd be like, I'm too scared. So crazy. Um, wow, it's a lot. Uh, Missy had a great collection of scrunchies, as you would in the 90s. And scrunchies has, are back. They're I'm back. So and I excited. Love them. I love my scrunchies. Yeah, they're, me too. They're really making. You know what my favorite thing about scrunchies is? And if you're a woman or a person who identifies as a woman with long hair, um, they don't catch in your hair. You know, yeah. elastics really catch in your hair and you can snag and you're pulling out your hair. Scrunchies, you really don't have that problem. 
No. And I love it. Easy breezy. Yeah. Yep. Um, Proms, proms, proms. So this is a 90s movie, but also a high school movie. So there has to be a prom in it, right? And I, man, I fucking love a good prom scene. I'm going to say it again. What the hell with proms that took place in high school gyms and people wearing tuxedos? I'm still not over this fact. I mean, they decorated it very nicely. But is, was this most there people's There were so proms? many balloons. Because I felt like I was in heaven. No, but no, I know. But like we, our prom experience for our high school was you, yes, we had homecoming where I people did dress up. it depends on the up. size of the high school. Okay. Because I think that we had a small high school, so okay. that was maybe possible. Oh, maybe that's not possible big. for like Texas where they have okay. so many kids. Because when we were seniors and you f- and we only had a senior prom, it wasn't like a junior senior prom or anything like that. They rented out a ballroom at a hotel. So okay. that felt more like, okay, guys can wear tuxedos and women can wear these formal dresses. It just just shocked me that people like went to a prom in a gym and they're wearing tuxedos. I just like it's love. Well, it's like homecoming for us was in the gym right. and it was like, why am but I guys here? Guys didn't wear tuxedos. No. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. And then also, I want to go into prom themes because this was something that we didn't have. And again, in high school movies, really lean right. on is the prom we themes. Had a, not a theme, but and I want to know if that's legit. We had like a like a sentence <laughs> like ours was like the way you look tonight okay. so it was like kind of a theme I guess I don't know but almost right. every high school movie we've watched has had a prom under the theme. sea but it's like dances like your dances our dances had themes but I feel like in movies they do it to be clever to fit into like whatever's going on like in the movie this year's theme is the millennium yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and for this one they it's a little tongue in cheek thing right? It, yeah because I'm in heaven I'm in which heaven. I think is like just a wink and nod at like mm-hmm. this is the angels and I think here here's my thought is that that alternate reality was never going to be a real reality it was always going to stop after X amount of days because okay. the angel guy was giving him a test right. so it was just and, and you could it was an you alternate could say, reality sort of but only to Johnny and like right. you could say that like that's why nobody raised an eyebrow about anything because it wasn't real and the whole movie is very much like fantasy sequence after fantasy right. sequence you're to the right. point where you're like okay. whoa like what that is real sense. really nothing is like as soon as he gets shot you can consider that like all of his, this his death dream or like his thing of like whatever okay. so that's, that, ma- that makes a lot helps sense. a little bit with the absurdity okay. um but yeah um uh okay french twist she uh missy has a french twist at the prom i feel like that was a very 90s thing mm-hmm. and i really coveted that hairstyle and tried to uh, master the French twist. It's very hard. And you know, I talked to our hairstylist friend, Johnny Vaught, and he said that is actually a really tough updo to master and it took wow. him a long time Okay, to so nobody could have done it to themselves. No. And it's good to know because good. I was like, oh, it's just a twist and that's like whatever it no. is. It's actually way more complicated. Sure. Yeah. I know. I bought a thing that's supposed to do it. It doesn't do it. It doesn't do it. It's, I think it's, it's like bullshit. a really complicated thing. Yeah. And then last but not least, the glass of milk. Sweetie. Yeah. Do you want to talk about the glass of milk okay. for the 90s things? The glass of milk. So we went through a period of time when you'd have dinner. Kids would sit down to dinner. You'd have your meat, your rice, your veg. Your wooden bowl plate, with the salad. Your wooden, <laughs> wooden salad bowl. Your plate of pieces of white bread with some butter on the side. And then you would have a, refresh, a refreshing glass of milk to wash it all down. Uh, today, that seems crazy to us. Like, would I ever be like, oh, I'm going to drink a whole... Like, I can't even drink like... Uh, a sip of milk without being like I'm dying <laughs> I'm lactose intolerant help but man as kids that was like our life force yeah that was our living flesh so to speak so in this um, movie like there's a dinner party scene and the mom has poured glasses pretty tall glasses of milk I feel like they're wine glasses tall, wine glasses with milk for yeah, everybody for everybody and yeah, it's bonkers, but I'll, I wish uh, Sweet Eye Jimmy was here because that is every now and then he has a tall glass of milk with a dinner and I'm just like, what, what is going on? You never told yes. me that. Oh my God, it's like really, really messed up. I'm like, ew, <laughs> like it's really weird. I, my friends, yeah, I've only seen it happen for like cookies and stuff. We'll like get out the milk for yeah, a, a brownie, a, a cookie, a really a dessert. chocolatey brownie. You need it's it fine. sometimes. Yeah. Oreos, That's so for funny. sure. But oh. he will, and it just totally takes me back when I see him pour that big glass of milk I'm like, whoa. Mm, yeah. Whoa. Good times. Yeah. Milk. Um, but okay. it was just part of the like false, like this like advertising of like you have to drink milk to have strong bones. And it's like, what? 
and um, and felt that that dinner combination almost like a throwback from like you know 50s 60s i don't I know i feel like which maybe is, they were trying to do with this movie a little bit yeah. because of the the song they titled it my boyfriend's back so a lot yes. of it is very weird like yeah. you're like where are we right now right. and a lot of the fantasy costumes are like 50s mm-hmm. style his, like, his outfit is very 50s okay. if, so then they're probably trying the to jeans do a, rolled up he has yeah. the converse sneakers the plaid shirt over a white t-shirt okay yeah they were totally trying to do a thing then yeah. i think we yeah. like, kind of missed it a little bit okay. Okay. um but they do little clever spins on it like the mom is this like badass who has like a gun okay, we and haven't is, talked like, about the mom at all oh my she's god great. she's so cool she just there's like a the part where the mom kind of comes in the house and she just like gets the shotgun out and she's like gentlemen please leave my house and like she's like dragging bodies home from the mur- mortuary the, the and dad them in the is fridge. edward herman who's just like a dopey <laughs> sweet do-gooder but is really you think she is too yeah yeah but she is like don't mess with my son like i will fucking kill you and they're pretty funny and she's she's the one who is like (laughs) so she knows once she knows that he has to eat human flesh to stay alive she is like on top of it and her whole persona is sort of like the momest of moms like she's always when he's he's getting he's buried and she like throws down a bologna sandwich into the coffin like if you're hungry son like here you go always making sure he eats whatever so that was her big her a big part of her like persona so she goes and steals a little kid like kidnaps a little kid from the grocery store and like gets a lollipop why did and she like think a kid would be like why would she think he'd want to eat a kid of all the people right. all the people i don't want to eat a kid and then she like steals a body from the mortuary and it's just like in the fridge and he opens the fridge and this like body pops out and she's like i thought you'd want a snack <laughs> so she's really into his well-being the dad is just sort of does nothing yeah. i mean he's a real like i said a real sweet guy but like nothing's done yeah um and then so last but not least for 90s stuff um i just put ass wipe down and underlined it a lot of that like ass um ass wipe like yeah. ass burger like that was like the square of the 90s oh. i'm just saying like using like, that as like burgers? an example like hey ass wipe yeah. i mean it was a beavis and butthead thing yeah. right like i feel like they that it all kind of started then um and it's probably from that but yeah that was a very and part of it's too probably like that you could say that without getting dinged mm-hmm. too much like in the ratings right. category right. or like you could say that on tv so people it, used what, it what was the pg-13 you could have like so one, one fuck F-word? yeah or like or no only shit no fuck yeah, no. or maybe F one fuck was r yeah i think an f yeah. f word made it into the the r um <laughs> crazy i know it's like it's just it's just language. words <laughs> it's so uh, crazy yeah silly um and last but not least i want to talk to you about candy so we're getting into uh tail end of halloween season here halloween's next saturday guys by the time you're listening to this it might already be halloween <laughs> And so in this movie, there is a scene with jujubes. So we had a big discussion between what is a jujube? And then that opened the door to some chatter about some other candy. So, sweetie, why don't you give your take on a jujube? So jujubes, I thought, were like these really hard, sticky candies that were like in these little, I guess, B shapes. And then you would eat them, but they would really mostly just get stuck in your teeth. So if you've ever had like a milk dud or like a gummy candy that was like ridiculously sticky, that's what it would be like. And it's just not an enjoyable texture. Have I ever had one? Maybe like one in my life. However, sweetie Googled it and I realized that I was thinking of juju fruits, which is like the yellow box. I don't even know if they make jujubes anymore. I don't think so. I've never seen them. But people always mention them. And maybe it's one of those candies that like we don't have on the East Coast or something. True, true, true. Uh, maybe it's like a Midwest thing or a Southern thing. I don't know. But yeah, a jujube is different. Probably worse than a juju fruit. The pre- juju fruits, they're probably like, we tried to make it softer. But they were still yeah. not. <laughs> they were still too exactly. sticky. So then that opened the door to, to, okay, what about Mike and Ike's, which I thought were similar. And Sweetie said no. No, Mike and Ike's are like so- very soft. Very they're like soft. those long. More like of- a jelly bean consistency. Yes. Okay. And the Mike and Ike's were like lime, lemon and lime, lemon. and then good and plenty were the okay. nasty licorice so, ones. Right. So then I was, was like, like, what's a good and plenty? <laughs> but it's like licorice or worse licorice. Like, I don't know why they're different colors. Like, they're <laughs> why just would you all want a whole licorice. box of licorice. I stuff? don't know, but they would always be in <sighs> of like a package with other things that were kind of okay. And then they would be good and plenty shoved in there. So you get home from trick or treating and be like, what the fuck? And then like throw out all the good and plenty. It's like, fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. Oh, yeah. And I never liked any of those fruity candies. I mean, so this is starting my discussion on just Halloween candy in general. 
So we so now we're at almost Halloween season, and we have talked about how we kind of went trick or treating, and we had these straw bags. Um, you know, people used to do pillowcases. That was like a big like eighties early nineties. We 90s did. We thing. had pillowcases sometimes. Yeah, you take your pillowcase, you go trick or treating, whatever. But then, like, there was some point someone went to the Christmas tree shop. I'm assuming my Carol and got these little sacks, and they were these little burlap sacks, like straw with um uh someone like I had a pumpkin. witch on it, and yours had a pumpkin. I thought yours had a ghost. I think mine was a witch, maybe. Did somebody say And a ghost? had Sweetie had said in a previous podcast, like she could smell that smell and she'd be like, that's it. That's our Halloween somebody bags. Somebody had the hat we used to pick <laughs> yeah. a name out of it. Yeah, it smelled yeah. like that. It was our Halloween bags. And she like quizzed me on it. I was like, oh my God, our Halloween like burlap sacks. <laughs> anyway, so we had like a whole route. Like we would do, it, you know, we had our whole road that we would go on and we knew all the people there. And Sweetie, I don't know if you remember this, but do you remember the, the house that gave us Drake coffee cakes? Yeah, and they would get all smushed in smushed your bag, and then the you'd be like, "Oh, you're like, I'm just gonna throw those away." And then there was one house that was so we do like our little road, and then we do kind of the road that ran parallel to it, ending on uh, the road that our grandmother lived on, which was basically down the street, and we'd end at her house. Now the house next to her gave I don't know if you remember this king sized candy bars that one year, and we like went. Bonkers. Wow! Yeah, sure. I mean, like that's the dream, right? Yeah, that's the dream. so so fun. But we'd end at Grammy Doris's and and Grandpa Charlie's and kind of show them our mm-hmm. costumes and be really excited and whatever. <laughs> but like, I don't remember hitting that many houses now that we've gone through that whole stretch of like geography of where it was. But we had a lot of candy. I think it was a good amount. I yeah. mean, like most houses were lit up, so that's like mm-hmm. we're talking like Lupin Way Kettle. Yeah. And yeah, then all those Grammys, little ones. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then maybe that house that had like the Christmas, you know, stuff. Wait, but it do the story scary. about the guy with all the lights. Okay. <laughs> so I just told this actually <laughs> last weekend, but I'll tell it again. Um, so we go down, I think, well, let's say it was Kettle Hole. It definitely was Kettle Hole Drive. Um, we walked down towards the end. There was this house like just like lit up like... Oh, like this is heaven. You're like, like Halloween come bastion. in. <laughs> yeah, like every light, every light in the place was on. So we go up to it. We're all excited. We're with our dad. Uh, it's me and Sweetie only. And then our dad, we ring the doorbell. The guy comes out like, for some reason, I want to say he was shirtless, but he probably wasn't. But like, he just like, I want to say down. bald with glasses. Oh, see, I, th- I, feel, I feel like he had long like oh, surfer okay. hair and he was just like so out of it. And he just like stump. He's like coming in. He's like, oh, and he's like scratching his head. He's like looking, looking at us like, oh, hi. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't have any candy, but um, uh, gee, you know, uh, I got some green apples in the <laughs> fridge. You apples. want those? He offered the apples. And mind you, this is the time that, you know, the last like years of when the razor blades and apples kind of thing was getting passed around. Like the last thing we fucking want is your yeah. razor blade apples. So buddy. I don't know if we took the apples or like I what? We did because we're so just nice. out of pity. We were like, sure, we'll take an apple. So then we're walking away and our dad's like, she's like, geez, who keeps all the lights on during <laughs> Halloween? <laughs> story is like dad's commentary is and we'll never true. forget it. i'll never forget it I and i'll forget. never keep my lights Exa- on exactly if i don't have candy exactly. like if i don't want sugar treats i'm like i'm turning every light, yes. light off in the house yes. i'm gonna watch tv in the closet so the exactly. kids can't <laughs> like i do everything in my power oh, exactly uh, that guy was weird he's probably high uh yeah. looking back on it right. like now something older, weird like, yeah. oh yeah like for, for like sure some kind of something oh man good good times but yeah trigger treating was the best i want to say like i i mean i think i've already mentioned this many times i was a Three Musketeers Milky Way gal. Um, I didn't like Snickers for a long, long time, and I was were not my favorite. So that or Kit Kat. Oh, I'd mm. say a Kit what? Kat too. Oh, you don't like Kit Kat? No, you did like Kit Kat. Or a uh, hundred grand. Or wow. Whatever. Yeah, with that was the, a rare. I feel like those the, are kind of new. Yeah, those when were we new. started trick or treating. But I was Butterfinger all right. the way. You were Butterfinger. Um, I never liked Butterfinger peanut butter cups, much. Butterfinger, oh, Snickers, peanut butter cups for sure. Milky Ways. Sorry. Hated Three Musketeers. I would leave them for like the very, very end in my bag. Would be like all Three Musketeers and those Drake coffee cakes. Like those would be the <laughs> last things remaining. And I never or um, Necco wafers. Oh, we did get some of those. But, um, and then I remember one year I did like the UNICEF box where you would like trick or treat with that and people would put money in there for you too. Did? Yeah. I was very proud of that. And Weird. then you bring it into school and they like put it to charity. So oh, that was really nice. I don't remember that. Um, yeah. Really fun experience. Loved trick or treating. God, that was so freaking fun. I'm so sorry to the kids who can't go this year. I hope people are able to do like something because it really is the highlight of your life when you're a kid. Let's be real. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, 
was that crazy kid who would like portion it like um portion out my candy every so i'd be like okay i'm only gonna eat like one a week and i would it would last till easter i'm not even kidding you i'd still keep be in mind it. sweetie still does this today <laughs> To the point where I'm like, oh, we bought a, here's a fun size Milky Way. She'll like cut it into three pieces and be like, this is for today. This part's for tomorrow. This part's still maybe yeah. Tuesday. Maybe I have some, um, like someone from the depression born again, like something don't I don't lose. think so. Whereas me was like, how much candy can I eat in a day? <laughs> Like for like mom and dad never had to say to me, okay, like you can only eat three pieces today. Like I would eat like one for like every week for the rest of the year. Oh my God. What a dream. (laughs) This kid. I'll tell you. What a nerd. I know. I was a real nerd. Oh boy. But I loved it. Well, uh, anyways, guys, thanks for spending another spooky evening with us. Um, have you seen this movie? Because I want to talk to you if you have and just like, where did you see it? Let us know. Find us on Twitter at the Sweetie Club or on Instagram at Large Marge sent us. Thank you as always for listening. Bye. Bye. Zombie rape artist. Hi.